Blackhawk Rescue Mission 5 is a free-to-play military-themed open-world experience that pits players against enemies on an island in the Bering Sea. An experience with grand scale and an emphasis on player customization. In this video, I will be focusing on showing you some of the basics of the game. For this video, I will be referring to Blackhawk Rescue Mission 5 simply as BRM. If I miss something out, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Welcome to the lobby screen. Here, you can view and customise your loadouts, change your settings, get to the store, and choose your spawn location. In BRM Open World, there are three spawn locations. The FOB, Sokraina City, and the Ronograd City UN Checkpoint. Be aware that the UN Checkpoint is only available to spawn at if you have two or more stars. The FOB is your go-to spawn, hosting two runways, three helipads and many vehicle spawns, as well as the hostage processing center. This will become more important as we go through the video. Welcome to the FOB. This is the main spawn in the game and has many fun areas for you to explore. But for now, the room I just spawned in is commonly referred to as the spawn room in the command center. Immediately after leaving the spawn room, you can collect ammo and supplies. These include medical supplies, ammo and ordnance. The ordnance consists of a frag grenade, a smoke grenade, a flare and a torch. Your character already spawns loaded with full medical supplies and max ammo. However, as you play, you may need to resupply occasionally. Medical supplies consist of 5 dressings, 10 bandages and 2 vitamins. Sometimes to get into battle, you may need to rappel. This is also known as fast roping. To do this, simply switch to a seat which isn't a gunner, pilot or co-pilot seat if you haven't already. Then, on the command of the pilot, simply press R on your keyboard, nothing else. Once you are safely on the ground, you are free to move about. Fast roping is useful for situations where a pilot cannot land in a certain area. It is also a quick way of dropping off troops. We are now going to look at the various ground vehicles and helis that can be bought in the game using the in-game currency. The vehicles will be in a fully upgraded condition, so the unmodified versions may look slightly different to the ones I am about to show you. To start with, here is the 4x4, more commonly known as the Jeep. This is a great starter vehicle which I definitely recommend. It is the fastest ground vehicle in the game, and has a maximum capacity of 5. When modified, you can have a mounted 50 cal on the top, which makes for great fun when you're playing in a squad. It is fast, manoeuvrable, and has a low profile, great for small operations. Like all ground vehicles, this can come in three camouflages, desert, forest, and snow. Snow is slightly more expensive, but is great if you intend on giving it silly cow-related names. The only downside to the mounted 50 cal is the lack of armour, exposing the occupants, especially the gunner, to enemy fire more than the default variant, which has a closed roof. After the Humvee comes the truck. This can come with or without the canopy, or even as a gun truck, which houses three machine guns, one of which being a 50 cal. This variant is a good squad vehicle, however is bad for hostage rescue missions as hostages are currently unable to get inside due to the low canopy. It has a great seating and turn rate, however it can feel like driving a bus sometimes due to its tendency to get stuck on corners and its slow acceleration and top speed. Overall, this is a great vehicle if you regularly play with large squads, which are made up of very patient players and a skilled driver. The next ground vehicle we are going to look at is the Humvee, a well-known military vehicle. This vehicle has a maximum seating of 6, but the variant I am showing you has 5. It is great for heavier battles rather than light skirmishes, and the armoured 50 cal on top is much safer for the gunner. The Humvee is fully armoured, so no enemy bullets will be able to hit the occupants. On the downside, it is slightly slower than the Jeep, a lot less manoeuvrable, and has a slower acceleration, which is worse if you're looking for quick turnarounds. However, it is a great vehicle if you and your squad are intending on an armoured assault into an enemy base. This next vehicle is a new addition to the game. It is called the Cougar, and it is a great squad assault and transport vehicle. It has a capacity of up to 9 personnel and is a fairly fast vehicle. It is fully armoured and has a manually operated door at the back. The only downside to this door is that sometimes you may have to tell someone else to close it for you if you've already got hostages seated inside. The armoured 50 cal on top adds a sense of security to the vehicle. 
It has a decent manoeuvrability and is good for slow, large-scale assaults where cover may be needed. The last ground vehicle in the game is the Striker, which is the second most expensive ground vehicle in the game behind the gun truck. It is only accessible by players which have three or more stars. Being an armoured personnel carrier, it is the heaviest and best vehicle in terms of armour and therefore it's great for heavy assaults with squads of up to 11 players. It has a large manually operated rear door, which is the only entrance and exit to the vehicle. It is best driven in third person as the visibility of the driver is extremely limited. The Striker is a fairly slow vehicle, however it is great if you have a squad of patient players. One thing to note is the fact that the gunner can only enter the gunner seat via standing on top of the vehicle, as although it may seem like it, one cannot enter the gunner position from the inside of the vehicle. 